What's up everybody? I'm in the middle of producing a little bit of a pizza party. We've got some guests coming over for dinner. We've made a pan pizza. We got a couple more and in this video I'm going to show you how I make the dough and cook this pizza from start to finish. We're going to be hand mixing, we're going to be eating, and we're going to be topping. What do you think Juniper? All right, let's get started. Time to mix our pizza dough. I've got all my ingredients in front of me. Of course, our levain. This was fed last night and allowed to rise slowly. You can also do a young levain for this dough. If you're unsure about how to get to this stage where you have ripe and active starter, I've got another video showing how I've fed my starter for over 15 years, full of tips and tricks on how you can maintain yours, and I'll leave a link in the description below. I've also got strong bread flour, double zero flour, salt, olive oil, and water. So to start our dough, I'm gonna add my water. Now the water is at about 28 degrees Celsius. Then I'm going to add my levain to the water and kind of swish it around. So we need 159 grams. I'm going to pop off the lid just to make it easier to get out. You can see it's nice and thick, beautifully active, smells great. If you get too much, if you use wet hands, you can pull a little bit of that off of there. And I actually put in a lot too much. There we go. And I'm just going to set this aside. And what I like to do is, first of all, you should see that your levain is floating in the water. That's a good sign. It means it's ripe and active. And I'm gonna get in there and just smush it up with my fingers to move it around. Next, we're gonna add our flour. Using your hand like a claw, we're just gonna pinch through the dough and make sure that we get all the dry bits. You can also use a wet dough scraper to just scrape down the sides and kind of fold the dough onto itself. So if you pick it up at this point, you should have one nice clump. You can use a bit of water on your hands to get any excess dough off. And then just start to work the dough in the bowl and make sure that you've got all the dry bits. We're gonna let this rest for about 20 minutes. Then we're gonna add the water to with the salt. Give it another 20 minutes rest. And then finally, we'll add the olive oil. All right, our dough has been resting for about 20 minutes and we're gonna add the salt. Super easy, clean it up a bit, sprinkle it across the top. And then I like to use the water too to mix in the salt. Add the water on top just to dissolve it a little bit, help it absorb. With a wet hand, I'm gonna to start to cloth through the dough again and incorporate the salt into the dough. We're just gonna keep going. You'll notice the dough kind of separates into pieces from the salt, but once you work it a little bit, it's gonna come back together and it's gonna be very strong. The dough is also gonna tighten up a little bit when we add the salt. If you feel any granules of salt, you can get your fingers in there and just feel around. Keep mixing. You really wanna make sure that that's fully incorporated. The extra bit of water that you had plus the really wet dough is gonna help that mix in properly. Once the salt is fully mixed in, I'm gonna use the dough scraper to clean up that bowl a little bit. If you take a wet hand, at this point, you should be able to pick the dough up as a whole. It should feel nice and strong, but it shouldn't window for you yet. You can see it kind of breaks apart. As this dough sits and rests, it's gonna develop extra strength. We're gonna let this rest for about 20 minutes. Then we'll mix in the olive oil. So I'll throw this on top and I'll see you in 20 minutes. Another 20 minutes is up. I got a little rest and I'm gonna mix in the olive oil. Now this pizza, I just call it a sourdough pan pizza. It is, we are gonna use a Roman style pan, but I don't wanna classify it as that because it's kinda of just a pizza to make at home, to eat. I don't know if it's technically a Roman style or not, so we'll just call it a sourdough pan pizza. But this comes in super handy, really easy weekday dinner. You can make the dough in advance and then you have all your ingredients in the fridge. It's very quick to throw together. So once you put the olive oil in, you're gonna do the same motion and start to pinch through the dough, and then just start to knead the dough back into a ball. Keep going, keep going. If you plan this out right, it makes your life so easy. Make one of these doughs on Sunday, and then on either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, you got a quick pizza for dinner. Can even double as a lunch the next day. Great recipe. So we're gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl, knead this just a little bit, and then we're gonna let it rest for a couple hours, we'll give it a few folds and then it's going to go in the fridge. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling the dough up and folding it into itself as I turn the bowl with the other hand and that kind of recreates what that mixer would be, that slow mixing, like kind of like this motion. But I find it easier to just rotate the bowl. Once we get to here, scrape down the sides really well, flip over your dough. You shouldn't really have a great window at this point but you can see the dough is starting to get stronger and through the next couple hours of bulk fermentation and folds, we're really gonna develop a lot of strength here. Once this is all fully mixed in, 
Give the bowl a scrape. I'm gonna place a towel on here and I'm gonna let this bulk from it for about two hours. In that time, I'm going to give it two to three folds. We'll see how the dough looks. If it's really slack, we'll give it a bit more. If it's nice and strong, we'll give it less. All of your mixing techniques are gonna be slightly different from person to person. So you're just gonna to have to look at your dough and through a bit of time and repetition, you'll learn what works best for you. It's been about 20 minutes. Our dough is relaxed. You can see it almost looks flat in here. We're gonna use wet hands and give this a good stretch to develop some strength. So get your hands wet, grab the dough, pull it up, and just fold it over on itself. You can see it's really kind of wet in there, but it's looking great. You should be able to pick it up and it holds its shape. And then once you're done folding it, you should notice that it doesn't slack right away in the bowl. And you can see around the outside that it's not flat. So we're gonna put a towel over this and we're gonna come back and give this another fold in 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes is up. I'm gonna give this dough a second fold and then we're gonna let it relax for another hour before it goes into the fridge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get same thing, wet hands, give your dough a good stretch up and over. Should be able to pick it up again. You can kind of pick it up and let it hang. A little bit of um, gravity, gluten development. And then we're gonna place this into a lightly oiled container. This is a two liter Cambro. It kind of fits this dough perfectly. Transfer it into the container. Of course, if you want, you could leave it in the bowl. This just takes up a bit less space in my fridge. I'm gonna put a lid on this and I'm gonna let this rise for another hour. So we've been bulk fermenting for one hour with two folds so far. We're gonna let it go to two hours. Then we're gonna place this in the fridge. I normally like to let this dough sit for t at least 24 hours and upwards of 48 hours. In one hour, we're gonna put this in the fridge and tomorrow we'll take it out and stretch our dough. I pulled this dough out about an hour ago. You can see it's beautiful, nice and bubbly and light. It's just screaming to get stretched into the pan. This is gonna be some beautiful pizza. We've got some olive oil here. We're gonna oil this pan. If it's your first time using the pan, I suggest using more oil than you think. These pans are excellent though, and I find they don't really require a lot. I'll leave a link below. This is from Lloyd Pan. They did not sponsor this video, although if anyone from Lloyd Pan sees this, maybe a little sponsorship would be awesome. But I do love their pan, I use it all the time. It's a great pizza pan and it's very versatile. You can do a lot of stuff. Word of caution, if you are going to order one of these, make sure you measure it because it doesn't fit all home ovens. It does fit my home oven, but it might not fit yours. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our dough out and we're gonna try and stretch it into the pan as far as it'll go. It'll probably fill maybe two thirds of the pan, half to two thirds. Rest it for 20 minutes, stretch it. Rest for 10, stretch. Rest for 10, stretch. And those slow periods of rest are gonna allow you to pull the dough and make it fit the full pan. If you try to stretch it right away, it's gonna tear on you. With a little bit of the oil from the paper towel, I'm gonna put that on my hands. You could also use water, but I think because there's oil on the pan and in the dough, it makes more sense. Well, I guess technically there's water in the dough too. We're gonna loosen the dough, try to get out in one nice piece. And then I'm just gonna let it fall into my pan. Now you can see that this dough does not really wanna stretch out for me. And it's really elastic at this point. And that's okay, that's to be expected. So just do your best to stretch it as far as you can without tearing it. You can see with each stretch it gets a bit further. If the middle is very fat, you can always pick it up in the middle and allow it to hang and that gravity is gonna give you a stretch. Just be careful you don't rip your fingers through the dough. Start to fill out the pan. Look at that, I've already got this two thirds of the way. We're gonna let this rest for about 10 minutes. I always wanna keep going. Sometimes you gotta stop yourself. We're gonna let this rest for about 10 minutes and then we'll finish the stretch. In the meantime, I'll do this over here. This doesn't need to be covered, just leave it on the table as is. This dough has been resting for about 10 minutes. You can see it's kind of retracted a bit, it's a bit elastic. So you're gonna give it another stretch, go right in the corners. I like to fill this right to the edges. If you don't want to, that's also okay when you're making this for yourself. Do what you wanna do, do what's best for you, you know? Don't let me influence your home cooking. Or I do actually, but make it your own, make it unique. So you can press it lightly. What you don't wanna do is, is pull and tear. So you sort of go underneath and pull the dough. You also don't wanna pinch your fingers through it. I do this with my daughter sometimes and she likes to sort of pinch through the dough gets a big hole in it. So don't go too thin. I'm getting a little thin there. So if that's happening, you can kind of fold a little bit of dough onto it. And then you can kind of press 
the dough from the middle or from the thicker parts just slowly. So you can see I'm kind of pulling the dough down and that's gonna help it fill out in the corners and on the edges. This dough is really nice today. If yours is more elastic than mine, it might be due to your flour or the way you've mixed it. You can give it a little bit more rest and then stretch it. So you can see I've already been able to sort of fill this pan out with the exception of a little bit on the ends. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this rest for about 10 more minutes and then we'll give it a last little bit of stretch. I'm just gonna leave it here uncovered. Another 10 minutes has gone by. Just gonna put a bit of oil on my hands and I'm gonna try and stretch this right into the edges of the pan. So you wanna stretch it all the way, whether that's you kind of pushing it. In, oh, don't do that, a little tear there. Whether that's you sort of pushing it into the edges or stretching it, whatever. But I do like to fill the pan because I'm gonna put the tomato right to the edges. So I wanna make sure that there's no side gap or end gap. And I got a little bit of one here. So by just gently pressing the dough to the side of the pan, I can get that filled out. There we go. And same thing on this side. Once it hits the side of the pan too, it tends to stick to the pan. And then once I sort of press into this, that's also going to give it a, enough to fill out the pan. So our pan is just about there. We give it a few more minutes. And I actually have to make the tomato sauce. So while I make the tomato sauce, this is gonna rest and we'll get it ready for the oven. I should mention that I've got my oven already preheated to the max setting so we can cook these pizzas hot and fast and get a nice crisp bottom and soft top. My dough is almost ready to cook, but I forgot I need some tomato sauce. So what I'm gonna do is food mill some tomatoes real quick. While this has its final rest, you can see it's not quite filling out the pan, it's just almost there. So while I food mill this, it should be enough time. I'm using Bianco de Napoli tomatoes today and all I'm gonna add to this is a little bit of salt and a little bit of olive oil. So you're gonna now use the food mill. We're gonna pass our tomatoes through. You could crush this up by hand if you want. Of course, you could just buy your sauce already made. This is my preference. I like to do a large can and then I'll freeze whatever we don't use. 15 grams of salt and I'm gonna do 75 grams of olive oil. This is for a 2.92 kilogram can of tomato. So if you have a smaller can, you can just divide that based on the ounces that you've got. Mix in the olive oil and the salt and then we're ready to top our pizza and get it in the oven. Just wanna make sure before we put the tomato on that the pizza's filled out the pan. You can see the corners are full. And then next I'm gonna just get a little dough on my fingers there. Next we're just gonna take our tomato sauce and I like to start with a strip down the middle. And I'm just gonna try to put this around. Now I go right to the ends with the sauce and right to the edges. You can do whatever you want. I think this is the best way to do it because then it cooks right to the end and you get these really cool crispy bits on the end and it just tastes delicious. I love actually this kind of pizza. So I've sauced all the way to the end. I'm gonna just take this towel and wipe off the sides of the pan. I was doing that a little quickly and that's just so that this doesn't burn in my, in my oven. And I'm gonna take this downstairs and fire it in the deck oven. If you don't have a deck oven, you wanna do this in your home oven on its max setting, 500 or 550. If you have convection, I would even recommend doing it with the convection on. My little deck oven is set at 300 top, 300 bottom. We're gonna open it, put it in, and give it a light blast of steam. And that's gonna keep the pizza moist, stop it from drying out, because we're gonna par cook this pizza with tomato, then we'll put the cheese on. If I do the cheese now, it's really overcooked by the time the pizza is done. So we're gonna open the oven, throw your pizza in there. The hot stone really helps this dough. Give it a little bit of steam. I'm giving about half the amount that I normally would. And I'm gonna let this go. I'm gonna set a timer for about 12 minutes. At 12 minutes, we'll pull it out, put our cheese on it. Our pizza's been cooking for about 12 minutes. What we're trying to do is get the full rise, let the crust set, then we'll take it out and put the toppings on. Otherwise, Oh wow, look at that. So it, it looks good without anything even on it. I mean, come on. All right, so our pizza is set and now we're gonna add our toppings to this. Then we're gonna put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes until the cheese is melted and slide it off the tray. Right, so we've got some low moisture mozzarella here. 
And I've got some Izo Sausage Co. Pepperonis here. These are cup and char, and they are a beautiful little grease cup. We're gonna put the cheese all the way to the end. Of course, you do what you want for your pizza. Fill it up. I like a lot. This is a very North American style to put so much toppings on, but I am in Canada, so we're gonna go for it. You could eat this as just a tomato flatbread and put some olive oil on it. You don't even need the cheese and it's delicious, but for today we're gonna do it. And let's do pepperoni on half today. And we're gonna load it up. Keep in mind that these pepperonis are gonna shrink significantly. It's gonna really depend on the pepperonis you're using or whatever meats, but I'm gonna go right to the edge on this one. My daughter always says she wants pepperoni and then I feel like she just picks the pepperonis off and she'll eat the cheese side, so. This way she can have both, best of both worlds. We're gonna throw this back in the oven. We're gonna let it finish off. It already smells amazing and it hasn't even finished cooking yet. So we're just gonna throw this in, full blast, full tilt, close it up. It's gonna take about 10 minutes, but I'm gonna check it. If it's your first time making this and you're in your home oven or a deck oven, or whatever, just check it after about five or six minutes just to make sure you get the results that you want uh, because my oven's gonna cook a little bit differently than yours. Pizza is done. It smells amazing. Oh, look at that. The pepperonis are cupping up and getting with a Christmas to them. The cheese is bubbly. My kids are gonna love this. So we're gonna get this out, pop it out of the tray, and have dinner. Pizza's out of the oven. Looks amazing. What do you think, Juniper? Looks good? Okay, now we're gonna slide the pizza off onto the tray. So you might have to get under, just make sure it's loosened. Yep, and then you're going to just slide it off gently. There we go. Oh, Ooh, it's hot. Hey, the tray is hot. Make sure the bottom looks good. Is it nice and golden brown on the bottom? Can you see that? Nice and crispy. Okay. Sourdough pan pizza. I think we're gonna go and eat this. Oh. Okay, let's slide it over. Which is, what do you want, cheese or pepperoni? Uh, pepperoni. Pepperoni? I don't Wait, even have a cutting seems... board big enough for this. Woo, look at that, beautiful inside. Pizza looks absolutely great. How big a slice do you want? Uh, Half? Uh, Little one? If you like this video, you should like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. After another 20 minutes, the timer will go off and you can swear. <laughs>